What's up, YouTube? Uh, just want to come at y'all with a, uh, a review video. Uh, one year review on this yard machine, riding mower right here. Uh, give me one second, be right back. Anyway, guys, uh, what it is is uh, there's a hood sitting over there, yard machines by MTD um, if you guys have watched my videos or whatever uh, if not um, what it is is <clears throat> this mower was given to me for free so that sparked my interest for sure I mean anytime you get a free ride mower that's hard to pass up even though it is MTD and uh, that was probably my biggest concern for this particular mower was, uh, you know, MTD. Um, cause yeah, MTDs are like the, uh, MTD is like the dollar tree of mowers, you know? So, um, anyway, uh, but after having this machine for about a year now, which uh, I didn't go back in my channel look, but y'all can go back in my channel look when I first made this, or when I first made a video on this machine. Um, the, the other thing that sparked my interest was, was that 46 inch deck. And, um, <clears throat> the reason why I sparked my interest for one thing, it was a bigger deck, but it's also heavy duty. Um, and when I say heavy duty, my son had a, uh, Boland's MTD, uh, there's yard machines, there's, uh, Boland's, there's, there's about several, I, I can't remember all the different brands that, you know, that. What it is is people buy MTD mowers and they slap their brands on it. And so, uh, but anyway, my son had a Bolens that had a 38 inch. And uh, the mower was made out of stamped thin metal. Uh, I'm sorry, the deck was made out of stamped, stamped thin metal. And, and uh, you could definitely tell it was cheaply thrown together, the deck was. And that 46 inch is not... Uh, it's very heavy duty metal, very heavy duty uh, deck, uh, three blades under it. And so uh, that was another reason that sparked my interest. Um, oh, Troy Belt was the other one uh, met that, <coughs> that uh, will buy MTD mowers. Uh, and what reminded me of that is, is I did a uh, I worked on a customer, customer's Troy built, uh, same colors, this and everything, the, uh, CVT, CVT pulley underneath or the variable speed pulley, whatever you want to call it, uh, had given out on it. And, um, I was not impressed. And, uh, and there's a lot on these mowers on these machines that you can tell that they, cut some corners and uh, they just trying to get a product out there to the people that don't have the money to buy the big expensive um, like zero turns and stuff like that so uh, that being said um, this mower here has definitely far exceeded my expectations it's made me have to swallow a lot of my words take back a lot of things that I said about it and uh, it also helped me to bust a myth and uh, and I'll talk about that here in a minute but um, more importantly on the machine though itself the mower uh, the reason why the hood is over there is because I'm about to do some maintenance on it uh, it's December 16th here I think is the year or I'm sorry the date 2018 and um, it's not cutting season, so and it's about what 65 degrees out here, so it's a good day to come out and do maintenance on your equipment. Uh, you know, good day for me to come out and do maintenance on my equipment and get it ready for the uh, cutting season. Um, anyway, 
Uh, so it wasn't running when I got it, um, but I don't want to start on that first. What I want to start on is what I've had to do to the rest of the mower uh, since owning this. Um, not a whole lot. Uh, does have four belts underneath it. Uh, it's got one from one on the transmission, one from the transmission to the. Uh, it's got one on the transmission that goes to the uh, CVT, and then one on the transmission that goes to the engine. And then uh, one that drives all the deck belts, and then another one that goes to the motor. And uh, so I believe it's four belts. It might be three belts. Um, I've had to replace two of them. Uh, the belt that's on the mower itself that, or I'm sorry, on the deck itself that runs all the pulleys, it's a pretty good belt, so I haven't had to replace that one. But the one that goes from the deck to the motor, uh, I did have to replace. I had to replace the small belt that goes from the transmission to the CVT on this, and then also had to replace the PTO cable on this. Uh, now, what was nice was on the PTO cable was I didn't have to go brand new I just uh, bought, bought a used one and uh, lubed it down real good and put it in there and it's been working fine ever since uh, what else have I done to the mower um, all of the tires have been in good condition all held air and everything uh, let's see I pretty much removed all the safety switches on it, the only one that's really still on there is the blade engage, and what that is is when the blade's engaged, uh, and you get up off of the mower, it dies. And uh, but as far as like mowing in reverse or uh, you know all the other ones, those have all been removed on this. Um, and I think that's it that I've had to do to the. Oh, I had to replace the uh, the steering in it. Uh, the gears um, had worn out and uh, uh, that's one of the things I'm fixing to do some maintenance on and uh, uh, spray it down with grease but the gears had given out on that so I'd replaced the, the steering on this the the steering column and then because the gear it, there's a gear at the end at the bottom of that steering column and then there's also a big gear that spins when you turn the steering wheel that turns the front tires. And so, uh, so I replaced all of that and, um, because those gears wore out. So I'll be, uh, shooting, shooting those down with grease, getting them, uh, ready for the, for the year. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I don't think there was anything else on the mower itself that I had to replace or or fix um, so I guess we'll talk about the motor now uh, the motor was actually the most work um, when I got this lawn mower the engine didn't run uh, you know nothing free is ever actually free um, I, uh, I guess the day that I realized that there was something severely wrong with it was I took the valve cover off, took the rockers off, and I pulled the aluminum push rod out, and the aluminum push rod was bent. So that told me something was severely wrong with it. However, I was able to get it running good enough to make sure that because I didn't want to tear into that motor and have messed up transmission or messed up something else on this mower. So I did get it running long enough to uh, make sure the transmission and all of that was still good on it. So, which made it, for me, made it so that it was worth messing with. Uh, let's see. So the bent push rod was... The telltale sign of this motor was actually a 
victim of poor maintenance. Um, but I didn't find that out right away. All I knew at that point was, was that it had a bent push rod. Uh, what I did was, or what I chose to do at that time was, was to go buy an, a used motor, um, 13 horse, a 13 horse overhead valve and put in there. And, uh, and it was great. The motor, motor ran good. It ran good before I pulled it out of the mower. Uh, I got it out of, and, uh, I think it ran for, I don't know, 24 hours and it acted like it locked up. And, uh, what had happened was, was on all riding mower, uh, engines, because you got the battery and the electric start. So you have to have a charging system, much like an alternator on a car, uh, Underneath the flywheels of these, they have a, a stator under there. And uh, on the inside bottom of the flywheel, there's magnets. And so when that flywheel is spinning and those magnets are going around that stator, it creates a charge to keep the battery charged up. Well, on that 13 horse that I had in here, the magnet had come loose. And when it spun around, because it had come loose while it was running, it spun around in the post they when they cast these engine blocks they cast them with posts that hold the uh, stator up underneath that flywheel so a magnet came around and, and hit that post not only did it mess up the stator but it knocked a big hole in the uh, engine block and uh <clears throat> and it also wedged itself between the stator and the flywheel so it wouldn't spin so it felt like it locked it up and um so uh, I called the guy and told him what had happened, whatever, and, you know, it was a used motor. It's really not under warranty or anything, but just to see if maybe he could help. But, um, which, you know, dropping down from, this is the original motor, uh, dropping down from a 20 horse down to a 13 horse was already a big leap. And that was the biggest one he had. And so, I mean, besides a Kohler, and I didn't, I tried to put a Kohler in here, but the exhaust system wouldn't work on this. So, so he suggested that I see if maybe I could use parts out of the 13 horse to fix this one. And um, <clears throat> so, I tore this apart and I took the crankcase off of it and uh, that's when it revealed the true issues that was going on and um, what it was was the bottom cam lobe was was round it wasn't oblong like a cam lobe is supposed to be and then also the lifter that was riding on that was all I mean it was just chewed up bad and um, and then like I said the push rod was bent and uh, I think it was the bottom lobe. I can't remember for sure. But anyway, um, so what I did was was I took that 13 horse apart and grabbed the cam and the lifter. I couldn't reuse the push rod out of that 13 horse because the difference between 20 horse and 13 horse, at least these two engines that I'm working with, was the cylinder was a lot shorter on the 13 horse. So I had to go back over to my buddies, and he had a set of push rods. And um, anyway, the 13 horse, though, did not have, if you Google these 20 horse Briggs and Stratton Intex, and uh, you'll see that they come with an uh, oil pump and oil filter. A lot like that one over there on my Craftsman. These are the same exact motors. Um, but you'll see on this one there is no oil filter anymore the uh, 13 horse did not have an oiling system an oil pump or none of that and it's all driven off the cam the oil pump is driven off the cam and so since i took the cam out of the 13 horse without the oil pump uh you know i couldn't run the oil pump that was in this so the crankcase or the bottom part of the motor and the reason why there's no air, uh, oil filter that you see over there is because that crankcase came from the 13 horse, uh, which did away with the oil pump. 
Um, now, that's where when, a minute ago when I said uh, help me bust a myth, there's been a couple of guys that have talked about rebuilding these Intec engines. And they've talked about if you don't put the shaft in there or, you know, if you don't have the oil pump working, it'll burn up the motor. Well, <clears throat> again, like I said, guys, it's the one-year review. And I've been a little bit harder on this machine than I have been on that one this year um, because if it's going to break, if it's going to burn up, then by God, I'm going to, you know, I just want to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it burn up and burn, I'm going to break it. Uh, but it hasn't. I mean, again, like I said, I've used this mower a lot more than I used that one over there this year. One, because it's the bigger deck. Two, it's the newer, newer mower. So, you know, kind of uh, giving that one a break over there that's been here a while. Um, and it's still going strong. Uh, this, this, this thing is still, like I said, going strong, guys. Still running, burning, uh, burning rubber, cutting grass. And uh, not an issue. Um, now I will say that I, uh, keep track of my oil and, uh, stay on top of my oil changes. One thing that I did before I made this video was I've already done the oil change on this. Uh, now one thing that I do on this one that I've never done on any of my mowers, um, because I buy my oil at a dollar store. And uh, because they sell cheap uh, SAE 30, which is what I run in these. Um, you should always run whatever the manufacturer specifies. But um, when I Googled it and, and looked it up on these Briggs & Stratton Intex, it said 30 weight. So, But on this particular engine, now that it doesn't have that oiling system, like I said, that oil filter, I uh, run 40, SAE 40 weight in it. And... Um, uh, Again, like I said, guys, I haven't had any issues. Um, now, I don't know for sure if it was just lack of maintenance and they didn't do the oil changes and they didn't check the oil. I'm, I'm guessing the biggest problem was, was they didn't check the oil. This engine had a lot of oil leaks when I got it. Um, one of the things I learned uh, about working on this, or, or at least uh, have found fall in love with a new product is is red rtv gasket maker uh because when i put that crankcase on the bottom of there there was there is no gasket this is what's in between and uh it does not leak any oil uh, did put a new uh cam seal or crank seal i'm sorry crank seal in the bottom of the motor and, uh, yeah, I mean, the, that part of it has been doing great. Um, the one thing also that has changed, that changed on this from the original was the, this muffler here, uh, did have the big rectangular muff, muffler, um, uh, that was on this also had a uh, guard and everything over the uh, rectangular muffler and the muffler was all rusted out and messed up and so uh, I had this one laying around threw it on there and uh, works great um, now one thing that I am doing and and I didn't just take the hood off uh, you know so you guys could have a good shot at the motor that's not why uh, <clears throat> the it does have an oil leak. Um, it, that one over there has the same exact oil leak. Uh, it's actually a big problem with these Briggs & Stratton overhead valve engines. Um, they all leak around this valve cover. And um, one of the big problems, I made a video when I, uh, I think it was last year when I was trying to seal the one up on that one, where I made a a gasket out of uh, cardboard yeah I don't do that guys <laughs> it didn't work um, 
Since that worked so well on that crankcase, that is what I'm going to be using. And um, but what it is, guys, is the the bolts don't stay tight. It, it you know you don't want to tighten them down too tight. You strip out those threads. But you know just through time that these um, that you use your mower, I guess it just vibrates loose or something, and you produce an oil leak. Uh, on these valve covers and so uh, like I said guys I've got this but I also bought some uh, well hold on let me show you guys what I bought was was I bought some JB Weld thread locker medium strength um, and I also got some lock washers some split washers that I'm going to put on there and uh, put that on there put that on there and the lock washers and uh, hopefully that will help the issue again like I said the problem is is those bolts come loose so as far as the seal on there it's not really gonna matter if I can't get those bolts to stay and so that's what the thread lockers for that's what the lock washers are for. Oh, and I got that also. That's what I'm going to be spraying on. I told you all I'm going to be uh, spraying grease on the um, steering gears. That's what I'm going to be spraying on there. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, I'm going to give that a shot this year. This uh, red RTV gasket maker and thread locker and some lock washers see what that does and uh, now what I did what I do have is I, I only have four lock washers so I've got the same problem on that mower so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use lock washers on one and no lock washers on another and I'm just gonna use the thread locker and the in the RTV gasket maker on the other so and see what happens so uh, anyway guys uh, that's where I'm at, uh, but the, again, like I said, this whole video is, is the, just a review on this Yard Machines by MTD, and uh, just wanted to tell you guys, it's been a, spe a spectacular machine, uh, you know, and then, like I said, guys, the, the work I did to this, and I was afraid, because I watched those videos, and those guys said it would burn up without that oil pump. <clears throat> it it will not it has not burned up guys so um i would start it up but i don't want to warm it up because i'm fixing to work on it but uh so there you go guys uh hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, uh i'll probably come be coming back at y'all with whether this actually worked so uh stay tuned for that so God bless and y'all take care.